I hate to say it, but the original's better. Hey guys, this is my review of the Magnificent 7. If you're wondering why I'm wearing this, I found it at a night market and I had to buy it. Very many reasons, I'll get to them eventually one day. Either way, Magnificent 7, this new remake directed by Antoine Fuica, uh, had some music done by James Horner, the music composer who died uh, a little while back in a plane crash, and I don't even know that he'd done any music besides the last film that he worked on with Jake Jill and all the boxing film, Southpaw, and then this was also co-written by Nick Palazzo, the creator of True Detective, and so all those aspects, and you would think this movie would be better than average. The problem is, throughout the entire viewing, if you've ever seen the, either The Magnificent Seven or The Seven Samurai, you're going to be constantly thinking about those films. And the thing that those two, the previous two, have over this film is runtime. The Seven Samurai is near on four hours long. I think it's either it is or it's over four hours long. It's been a while since I watched it, but the amount of time that that film elapses, we basically know those characters so much. And the thing that I've always found interesting about the end of The Seven Samurai is even though they win, you still feel a huge loss because you've lost four of the main samurai. So for this film, any of the main seven who do die, you don't even feel an inkling of that loss. Maybe with one of them, but otherwise, this film is very generic. That's the issue that this film has. Is We get some pretty cool gunfights here and there, but we got a PG-13 th PG rating that limits the amount of violence that we've seen. We know that there could have been way more. We have a cast that's very diverse. The problem is we get barely enough time to really acknowledge any of them. Sure, some of them have a little bit more screen time, a little bit more of these humor jokes, but we really don't get into the delving of the characters as why they join up. Some of them we understand. Other ones... Like, we just have a joke that he's with there for a horse. Other aspects of the film are a bit weak, mainly Peter Skarsgård as the villain. He's really good at being an absolute horrible human being, but his reasons are so few and far between because of the lack of screen time he gets and the lack of his explanation as to who he is. We just see him shoot people and be like, I want your land for my money. Blah, blah, blah. And that's possibly the weakest part. And the thing with Nick Palazzo is we've seen him be able to do flawed characters. And that's what I was hoping when I saw his name up on the screen. I was like, holy crap, we'll get some really good flawed characters. None. Really. Everyone's so good or bad. Really, there isn't someone in between, and that was something I was hoping for. Like, sure, we have Ethan Hawke, who has a very interesting character trait that he is fighting personal demons from his past, but it, his whole story just seems so cliched. And that's another issue, too, is that this film is full of cliches. There's some interesting moments here and there, but otherwise, we have a very formulaic story, and like I said, the fact that we have these two previous films that have a much longer run time than this one, we are basically getting the watered-down version of these two magnificent films to this one. And that's the biggest issue, is that that's what this film is fighting against. I love Antoine Fuqua's work. Sure, sure, some of it hasn't been the greatest, but he is a very good action director, very competent. And I like Denzel Washington, I like Chris Pratt, I like Ethan Hawke, I like Vincent D'Orofrio, I like the South Korean actor, sorry. But I, I don't know, I just, the whole time I was just seeming there kind of being a little bit, like some of the action sequences were okay, but in the end this film is very generic. You are able to remember it less than like a couple of weeks after you've seen it, good on you because... I won't. My end review for The Magnificent Seven is a 3 out of 7. That's harsh, I know, but the thing is, it just, I didn't find, I wasn't very that much entertained. Like, I knew exactly, the only thing that kind of surprised me was one of the seven who didn't die. Otherwise, I saw everything else. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I hope the shirt wasn't too weird for you. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later.